Welcome to the Axon Wednesday Bulletin. My name's Kevin Graham, his name's Colin Watt, and today is the day after Celtic got the Europa League campaign off to a winning, not a winning start, but we've won, we've got three points on the board. Um, we're feeling good about ourselves, Colin, today. You were one of the 50,427 that were at the game. Tell us, what was it like? Uh, first of all, I've got to say, uh, and just before we go any further, there is a, a, a commenter that we've seen just before um, we started today, um, who is called Stephen McGonagall. I just want to bring this up. He just says it's his last day on Axon for him because he goes into hospital tomorrow. Hopes to see you all very soon. Well, but on behalf of everybody here at Axon, Stephen, we do wish you the very best. Um, and hopefully you won't be in for too long. Definitely, um, but Stephen. Yeah, the, I mean, first of all, crowd-wise, I was amazed. I was absolutely amazed at the amount of people. That's 50,000 sick notes, empty classrooms, empty offices, full pubs. The traffic was horrendous. It was, it was just like a traditional European night at Celtic Park, um, except it was still bright. Uh, and the the funny thing was looking down. I'm in the, the kind of top tier, and I looked down onto the the main stand and the, the 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 old jungle. And you look down and you see when the sun comes in and everybody's like that. I try and look onto the park. That was sunshine during a, a Europa League midweek game. It's incredible, but. Fair play to not only the fans, but to the players. I thought it was a fantastic performance, second half especially. Uh, we created that many chances that it was two going on six or seven, and we should have buried at least a couple of them. Um, but also, I, I hope this sends a message out to um, the likes of UEFA. And I think the banners yesterday were very apt to the fact that, yes, OK, just because we've done it once doesn't mean we'll do it time and time again. But as the story goes, over and over, we will follow Celtic. And we turned up in our numbers yesterday and the team done us justice. Unless you're like me, who's having a pretty pointless protest when you get 50 things turning <laughs> up at half past three on a Wednesday afternoon. But then I'll stick with my principles and I'm not going to go back on that <laughs> until my club starts showing uh, some, until there's change within my football club. Um the Green Brigade banners were spot on, eh? They were really, really spot on uh, at half both. past three on a Tuesday afternoon <laughs> uh, is not on for for UEFA. The fact is, they made us feel like the the black sheep of the family saying you can't play at the same time as the Champions League. I, 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 I just think that was absolutely shocking. And it shows you and it shows you how much contempt they've actually got for their own competition, Colin. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, you look at the way that BT treated the game yesterday. BT Sport 1, BT Sport Ultimate, they, they put so much attention on a game which normally wouldn't get it because of the way that the kickoff times are. Uh, and I've got to say congratulations, as you said, to the Green Brigade and to the boys group for their banners before the games yesterday. I think both of them hit the nail right in the head. Look, UEFA, we're probably going to pick up another fine for that. But it's absolutely deserved the fact that we've made so many people take a half day at work or take a day off work I'm sure they're not complaining after the result yesterday mind you but it's such an inconvenience to try and play it just so we can fit it in just so that it, you look at the Champions League last night right some great games but they played two of the games at half five there's only six games in the evening what is to stop one of them games being the night time game what stopped us being the night time game yesterday it's ridiculous I think there's a Europa League game taking place tonight as well. I think Leicester are travelling to Moscow. So, right, is that a five o'clock kickoff? Is it I'm something like that? But surely there was there was space in the schedule to include Celtic last night. It was it was pathetic. I mean, when would you ever see a, a big team like? Um, and I'm I'm not saying that Celtic's not a big team. I'm just saying the likes of a, a Real Madrid or a Barcelona or a Bayern Munich uh, being told to play at three thirty, just because that's when it suits the schedule. There's not a chance that would have happened anyway, Colin. We know that that question would never have been asked of a Barcelona, Liverpool, Man City, any of those any of those elite clubs. Um, we, we have to have a look at the performance yesterday. I was going to actually say something else, but it completely went right out my mind. I, I, I was talking about the crowds. Um, I'll, I'll come back to me. I'll probably shout it back in. I probably will shout, I will shout it back in. The tagline today 
is are we witnessing the evolution of Ange Postacoglu's Celtic? I says on the post match yesterday that everything that I've said before was wrong. We judged far too early what we were actually seeing. Uh, it was almost we're actually seeing a controlled performance now from 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 the Celtic uh, from from the Cel- from the Celtic team. And Paul asked me a couple of weeks ago on one of the on one of the podcasts that we actually did on a Saturday, one of them impromptu podcasts yeah. that we actually did. What was post, what was Ange Postacoglu trying to implement? I think we're actually now seeing what Ange mm-hmm. Postacoglu was actually trying to implement. And everything we've commented on before and tried to measure before is now looking a bit stupid. Uh, I think my comments, looking back on my comments, they look a bit like, they look a bit daft now because as we're progressing, we're actually seeing what this team, what Postacoglu is trying to bring into this actual side. And this is getting backed up with the players calling. Because mm-hmm. post game yesterday, Joe Hart was asked, "Are you being more pragmatic?" And jo- what Joe Hart actually says was, "No, we're just doing, we're just just doing what the manager's asking us to do, and we're just doing it better." And Callum McGregor was asked, he says, "No, it was always meant to be more controlled." Mm-hmm. So, if you take those comments, what we saw against Dundee was like thrown. A baby and a like throwing a baby in a swimming pool and asking it to swim to the side. Yes, it managed to swim to the side and get a result, but now we're getting more controlled and now we're basically swimming to the side. What, what, what's your feelings now? Do you think over the last couple of games we're actually seeing that Postacoglu's sides are not going to be as utterly reckless as what we saw as what we've seen earlier in the season? Uh, definitely, and I, I've got to say, I've been one that's that's stuck up for Ange, even when he's been getting the criticism uh, throughout the the early parts of the season. And I think uh, people need to realise that it's going to take a bit of time for some of these things to settle in. The problem is in Scottish football, you just don't get time, especially when you're at Celtic. I mean, the the demand is for success and success immediately. Um, and considering the season we had last year, that probably plays into a bit of the the kind of motion of everybody wanting immediate success as well. But what you are now seeing is that as these players that were injured and out of the squad are coming back in, they're playing a more pivotal role. You're getting players like Callum McGregor, who for me yesterday was absolutely the man of the match. And he was the man of the match, even missing a penalty. So that says how impress- impressive his performance is and how important he is to this team. You're seeing guys coming back into the team. I still think we're maybe... Um, two or three players away from being the solid 11 that we can use of, of all the players we've got as IH decorating comes in here to say you're operating without a dozen first team players he was at one point now I think you're maybe missing your right back your left back maybe not even a centre half anymore we'll, we'll get into that discussion later on but if you get a solid right back and a left back in there I think you've got the basis of a very good team if you can get to January and you can keep putting the pressure on Rangers at the top of the table, maybe even overtake them before then, and you go into that January transfer window and you pick up two midfielders, that could be the difference between being up there when it comes down to the end of the season and just being running short, uh, shortly close after. I, I think we're starting to see the style of football Ange wants to play. The invented fullbacks yesterday, I noticed, deliberately looked at it, that one went forward and one stayed back. So they are learning how to play this role. This is stuff that, although, yes, they're professional footballers, if they've never played it before, it's going to take them time to bed it in. And you don't really get the time by playing it. You've got to do it on the training field as well. We've, we've kind of put them into games and we've lost games or we've drawn games because the formation hasn't been right. And this is where people are saying, no, you've got to change it. To be fair to Andy, you stuck by it. And we're starting to see the rewards coming through now. Ange's never actually says anything that this style against Dundee or St Burn was the style that he wanted to play. And I think it, you mentioned the inverted full- fullbacks there, Colin, and the, 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 the famous still which appeared all over Twitter I, I, I called yesterday. I went, well, that's the two fullbacks making a making an yeah. error. <laughs> that was yep. not, that is, shouldn't be the case, and I think the players have now put are starting to put up their hands, going, "No, we're just starting to understand this more, and mm-hmm. we're starting to do this better." As I H decorating rightly says, we were operating without a dozen first team players, and now 
Poster Coglu says it, and, M- and McGregor has actually said it. We've got more settled, and we've got more options, and the players are understanding more what we're trying to achieve here. Now, whoever had the Brendan Rogers cut a uh, clacks, and it's ten minutes thirteen seconds before <laughs> Brendan Rogers was actually mentioned. It's getting earlier every week. It's, yeah. it's getting earlier every and week. And we were off last week. <laughs> I, I know, but what I'm going to say here is that performance yesterday. And the performance against Motherwell on Saturday reminded me of Brendan Rodgers' last 18 months at Celtic, where we would just eventually grind teams down. And we were defensively not solid, but we used the ball, we kept the ball as a defensive mechanism. The way that we're going, this this is no... it's, it's It's no Jurgen Klopp that we're actually seeing here. We're actually seeing a version of and just just a version of Brendan Rodgers. I'm seeing if this is the way that the team's going to go, the possession based, then I'm seeing a lot of I'm 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 seeing I'm seeing a lot of uh, similarities with Brendan Rodgers. Well, I tell you what, if Ange has the success that Brendan Rodgers had, then nobody will be complaining at the end of the day. And that's just the style of football that you're seeing now more frequently across the sort of big leagues in Europe. This is the way that the kind of modern thinking coach wants to play, is to get the ball down, to try and pass it about, to tire out the teams and to kill them off towards the end of the game. You're speaking about Rodgers and there we go, there's another klaxon at 11 minutes and 35 seconds. But if you watched Leicester's performance against Manchester United at the weekend, you saw exactly how you would say Leicester being an underdog team came up against the big boys in Manchester United and tore them down, got in their faces and actually caused them to make the mistakes that led to Leicester's victory. That's what we did yesterday in that second half. Although we weren't the underdogs, you take a look at that second goal, we actually closed down as a unit. We went after it and we chased after that ball. It was like trying to find food in the wild. They were scavenging for that ball. They closed it down, we won it back, and we took the chance. Maybe at the second or third opportunity from Turnbull, but we did take the chance. That's the kind of football that you want to see at Celtic Park, the football that gets you off your seat, and you see the team actually coming together and working together. That's something we haven't seen at Celtic for the last 18 months, in my opinion. What I'm going to say as well, Colin, you're talking about that scavenging in in the 80th minute, 82nd minute. At the start of the season, our legs had gone after 60, 70 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I think we've had an uh, The fitness has improved, but I also reckon the way that we use our energy has improved. Because we're, because we're not going at it full pelt from the start of the game. There's a measured approach now. And I don't think that's been a... Uh, an instruction from Posta Coglu. I think that is just the players learn. I think Posta Coglu always says this is the way that we're going to do it. But the players maybe misinterpreted it at the start. And now they're learning more and more what they're meant to be doing. Mm-hmm. We're actually beginning to see that the fruits of that message. Every day there's going to be an improvement. We're going to need to say this. Trust the process, eh? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think that's I think people who were originally saying yeah, I don't know if this is going to work. I think the last couple of games, especially um, like the Aberdeen, the Motherwell in that game last night, I think people are starting to buy into it. And that is the thing. The manager does have to put results on the table for people to start to get to be- get behind them. Um, I mean, you can take a look at what's happening up at Aberdeen. They're playing some great football, but they're getting beat every week. I mean, they even get beat off Dundee at the weekend. They're talking about Stephen Glass going. Do they trust that process that Stephen Glass can turn that around at Aberdeen? Well, he's got to start putting the performances and start getting the wins for the fans to get behind him. And that was what's happened at Celtic. Celtic have now got the wins. They've won the last two away games. They've won the game in Europe. And the fans that were originally sort of on the fence are starting to go, right, I can buy into this now. And that's what we need as we continue forward into this season. I think results do do butter over things. I, I do, but I, I, a lot of the time, as, as I'll go back to the conversation I had with Paul, I couldn't describe what he was trying to implement. And since Aberdeen onwards, I can now actually see what he's trying to implement. And that's all down to the players. Mm -hmm. It it seems to me that the players now understand more, I've got used to more, what they're actually trying to do. And I do also think getting Callum McGregor back in, in the middle of the park has helped us immensely. We've got nobody at that football club that can replace Callum McGregor. No. 
No, and that's something we have to look at in January big time because he's so versatile for us. He played that number six position yesterday, the defensive holding role, and I thought he orchestrated the midfield very well. He then had the two tens up front in Turnbull and Rogic, and you noticed maybe the first 50, 60 minutes, we couldn't quite link up the midfield and the forward line. But then you take a look at um, when Nier Beaton came on, and <laughs> you don't want to be turning to Nier Beaton every week because you know he's he's kind of guilty of the, the odd unreliable performance but when he came on Turnbull sort of moved into the number eight position this the box the box midfielder and that's when we started hunting in packs that's when we started closing them down we can't really do that without him being in that role so if James McCarthy who was missing yesterday for whatever reason I still don't know why he's not in amongst the squad if he's injured or what it is if he's not the answer at number six, we need a defensive midfielder brought in there so that we can utilise the best out of Callum McGregor. And we need someone very similar to him to come in as well because he's not going to get through the rest of the season without injury or without suspension or something like that. And we can't afford to not have that box-to-box midfielder in the team. No, no, we don't. You're right. That is a, that's a glare. That's an obvious weakness in, in the squad. Uh, that we have got nobody to replace Carl McGregor. I think as well we've still maybe got a bit of doubts, and even Poster Coglu has doubts about the access of Rogic and Turnbull as well. Poster Coglu has been very, very open, saying I'm going to need to rot- rotate them because, but I haven't had the options to rotate them as well. So stuff that we've been saying on this, and stuff that's been getting says on other Celtic podcasts and written in the Celtic press as well. Poster Coglu knows. Uh, as well knows himself that there's still deficiencies in his side, but he is going to be really, really pleased over the last couple of weeks mm-hmm. of the performances. I know that he places a lot of a, a lot of emphasis on the performance as well, uh, rather than the result. Well, he does actually. I, I, again, that's me buying into the, the narrative that somebody that people want to actually. He knows that he needs to win games, but he, what he's actually saying is, if, a, if we get a performance, we will win games. It's like what he says post-match yesterday. I we defended well. I was pleased that we defended well. Sometimes clean sheets, you can get a clean sheet and not defend well. Yeah, I mean, what what I think you're seeing now is consistency. Consistency in performances across the team. Um, I think when you look at it, he's talking about defending well. I thought Ralston played okay yesterday. What he did is what he does best. He kind of put his body on the line. Um, and by the way, before we, we kind of gloss over this, he got yellow carded for standing up for his teammate yesterday. And that is that is so important to me, that we are actually seeing that players are fighting for each other. I'm not saying physically fighting for each other. I think he was a bit daft to kind of throw his arms about and get the yellow card. But the fact that he stood up for his teammate, that's something we're not seeing this is where you'll see the kind of team coming together as if they start to do that for each other. But they, he made an important block. He kind of distributed the ball pretty well. Cameron Carter-Vickers, to me, he's one of those players, and I, I think I've said this to you before, when you see a lone player, you think, mm, are we just developing him to move him on? Has he really got his heart in it? He just looks like a Celtic player to me. Mm-hmm. He, he is, he just looks like a Celtic player to me and I think if we've got the option to take up that sort of whatever it is that we need to pay for him in January you've got to do that uh, Starfelt for me had his best game in a Celtic jersey last night and that was even picking up the yellow card I thought he, he used the ball sensibly um, he didn't give the ball away as frequently as he previously has done um, and he looked far more composed on the ball I don't know if that's because Friday never really came out and never really had a go at him but he did look a lot more comfortable the only one for me that was kind of a bit out of place yesterday and I, I don't know if it's because he wasn't fully fit coming back into the game was uh, young Montgomery because we kind of threw him in at the deep end and he looked a wee bit lost at first he grew into the game but you could see just before he got taken off with the injury he was there was time where you're thinking right we've got to try and get him off and replace him to keep it going because that's the, the kind of area of the park that uh, Freddy were kind of coming down and taking having a go at us for. Now, there's a couple of things there, Colin, but I'll, I'll kind of wrap up the first week quarter of, of, of today's broadcast by bringing up this comment by Michael Riley. 
I mean, we're talking about the evolution. We're not getting. I think it's extremely clear now. We're not getting a revolution. We're actually getting a rev- an evolution of mm-hmm. Foster Coglu's side or this new Celtic that we're actually seeing. And Michael Riley comes in and says, "Can't fully judge the manager until he builds a squad." And let's not forget the mess he is still there behind the scenes that needs sorted. The first bit is build his squad, and I think all Celtic supporters now need to actually get behind Foster Coglu. We're actually seeing now what he's trying to achieve where maybe four or five weeks ago we weren't seeing that. And that's down to circumstances for me. That's down to not mm-hmm. having not not having options. We'll move on to what he says eh, about the two fullbacks and, and the defence. Yesterday, I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna lay my, my heart, even though I haven't got one on, on the table <laughs> here. The biggest moment of that game. For me, yesterday was Tony Ralston's challenge after we went one nothing up. Mm-hmm. That changed our mentality of of the game. That challenge was utterly superb, and Ralston deserves all the credit under the sun for that. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's where Ralston's at his best is putting his body on the line for the team. I mean, technically, I still don't think he's he's great as a, a footballer going forward or anything like that. But we talk about needing players who are committed to the team and committed to the jersey and he's certainly one that's like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely and for me that's a, that was the biggest moment of the game and there was a few big moments in the game yesterday, yesterday that we're going to speak about but that challenge was to keep it at one nothing at that point and you could actually see the reaction from Joe Hart from, I can't even remember mm-hmm. the centre, I think it was Vickers that was next to him. They were they rubbed them on the head and said, "Brilliant, fan, mm-hmm. thanks, thanks for doing that." And that's togetherness that wasn't there. That yeah. togetherness wasn't there a few weeks back. And maybe this is them just growing as a squad. Yeah. I mean, we've got to remember this squad's been thrown together, and now you're actually seeing them growing as a squad. Sean Barlow comes in and, and sorry, Sean, I there he's there. Look, and this is a great point when we're talking about the squad togetherness. Look, when the St. Mun boy took out Turnbull, there was not one player standing up for him. Mm-hmm. Last night when Yota was down, there was Ralston McGregor there, shows there's a team spirit. That team spirit is coming and it has been coming for a couple of weeks. And again, we have to go back to what Poster Coglu says. He says, the guys are still bedding in. Yeah. But still... Sorry, Kev. No, no, I was going to no. say, but when you look at it, we're actually seeing a settled team right now. As far as I'm aware, that's the same team that played on... Uh, Saturday that played on Tuesday, uh, last night as well so you're seeing a team that's actually settled and coming in together so the more that these guys play with each other the more they're going to work out where they play where the runs are and the more they're going to have that togetherness you become kind of a team or a family by working together you know that yourself even from your own work if you've got someone who's kind of new in you kind of you're nice to them but you know that they're probably going to move on. The same way if you've got somebody that's coming into the team, you're nice to them, they'll move on, somebody else will come in and replace them. Now you've got a sort of settled team. They all know how to work together and they're all building this sort of relationship together and it's only going to get better. It is going to get better. And you mentioned other fullback, Montgomery, obviously never played against Motherwell on Saturday. That was the one change. It was Bolly. Bolly out Montgomery in now. So Montgomery didn't play. He came on yesterday and for me, as you say, he looked a bit lost in the first half, done superbly well for the penalty kick to get the mm-hmm. penalty kick, yep. played, a, played a big part in the first goal to play the one-two with, with uh, Yota to get him out. I reckon Ange knew he was going to get a 60-70 minutes out of him yesterday. And that's all he was fit for. But he trusted the young lad. He, he trusted the young lad to give him that and not to let him down. And I don't think he let Postacoglu down yesterday. No, I don't think so either. I mean, you could see that he could see he wasn't up to speed right from the word go. I think there was a cut. I think there was one in the maybe twenty fifth minute or something. He went to take a quick free kick and it ended up with Finnish Faros getting the shot away on goal because it was given straight to them. But he didn't chuck it. He kind of kept his head in there. He, um, he he always was looking for the ball. He wasn't maybe as confident as he previously had been in taking the ball forward. But as you said, if he's only fit for 60, 70 minutes, then you're not going to see 100% out of him. Um, but what Montgomery's got to look at here is he's been a, a sort of benefit of the way that the team 
was previously run last year. You take a look at the reason why Ball and Golly, who played at the weekend, wasn't playing yesterday. Because he's not in the Europa League squad. Why is he not in the Europa League squad? Because we've got a lack of homegrown players. And that's why players like Ball and Golly have to step out because we can't put in these homegrown players to allow us to bring in the foreigners into the list. So when you when you look at it, Montgomery's stepped up and he's took his opportunity and now you're going into it. Hopefully, fingers crossed, he's not too badly injured. He did look as if he was kind of taking a sore one. But you're now sitting going, Ball and Golly, Montgomery... Taylor when he's eventually back fit and then Scales who I thought played pretty safe yesterday when he came on you've got four options at left back not one of them's maybe a, a standout but probably the four of them you could turn to and ask them to put 90 minutes in it is, it is, If all four of them know the system mm. and are disciplined in the system as we've already talked about the inverted fullbacks and on against Motherwell when you look at the, the heat map it's very clear that Ralston was the one that was further up the park and Ball and Golly was sitting deeper. Yep. And that was something that wasn't happening earlier in the season. So if your fullbacks understand the, the system, then they can come into that system and play. That's not to say that they're going to be the long-term answer as the Correct. left back, but as long as they understand their job for that 90 minutes, then they can come in and do it. We can criticise, we can we can surmise or make rash predictions of the future of these players, <laughs> but Postacoglu's got four to choose from. One of them's injured, one of them comes in every so often when there's nobody else there. It's quite obvious for me that Liam Scales is getting broken in gently into the team, uh, making the step up from Irish football. So that leaves Montgomery at the moment as a 19-year-old kid who's came through the academy is there by default, but he's also but he's also there on merit for me, Colin. Because mm-hmm. and I think that was proven yesterday that, that Poster Coglu will act him, I know that you're going to give me 60, 70 minutes. Go out there and do that and we'll see what happens after it. What I'd like to see though is when we have got the likes of Taylor Bolly and Scales all fit and available for that left back position, I would like to see Montgomery given the chance to play further forward in his more natural position. Now, I know Jota, and we'll get to Jota in a minute, and he's been outstanding so far. Uh, in fact, if we've not put that £6 million offer into Benfica this morning, then we're, we're far too late. But you're not going to get 38 games out of Jota. You're not going to get 38 consistent games out of Jota. You're going to get maybe 20, 25, and that's going to be brilliant for us. But he needs somebody else out there. And Kyogo, you feel as if you've sort of wasted him when you put him out wide. So with Johnson coming back in, with Montgomery out there, it's just adding the options and adding depth to the squad. We're not saying they're going to be the, the sort of number one player, but just having that option that you can turn to, that if Jota's not having a good game, you can turn to the bench and you can say, right, Adam, go on and give us 25 minutes. And you saw what he done when he was pushed further forward up at Pataudry. So the ability is in there. It's just having that extra squad, those extra options, that when the game's not going for you, you've got someone to turn to. Definitely. I'm going to bring in a, a comment by William Kennedy here and about perceptions of the Celtic fans. And he says, after the Hearts game, Celtic had six wins in a row. We only have three wins in a row now. The perception of some Celtic fans for this season is very confusing. What I'm going to say for me for that, that that's a great point. And, and he brings up that we had... Earlier on, on this roller coaster ride, we were up there and we were scoring goals for fun. But I think these three wins are more important because, one, the transfer window's shut and we're, and we're now left with what we're going to have between now and January. This is more a post to side that, that, that he's been left that he's worked with. Mm-hmm. And after the horrendous run that we had in September to what to the last international break, I think these three wins have actually shown more that we're going in the right direction than those six previous ones. Yeah, and I think the importance of that international break will come back later on in the season, where you've had not as many players going away um, for international duty and they've not been travelling too far. I mean, you look at Scotland, the furthest they had to go was about 300 miles up the road to the Faroe Islands, so they didn't have that long travel. What I was most impressed with is Roderick after travelling out to uh, the Far East, coming back and putting in a great 90 minutes against um, Motherwell as well. But 
the time that some of these guys like Yakamatis and Scales and other players like that who have got with Ange and understanding Ange's system, the guys like Montgomery and Ralston as well, that will benefit further on in the season where they maybe were playing three, four games a week and couldn't get that special one-on-one training with them. They now have that international break that they can do that. And the one in November that's coming up, I think that'll be pivotal to see how we go from then to January to see what kind of players, because you're expecting the likes of um, Chris Julian, James Forrest, guys like that to be back in. So they won't be going away with the national teams. So you've got that time for them to work with Ange and to understand Ange's philosophy and how they can fit themselves into the Celtic team. And that could be very important going forward. Definitely. AJSC Technology videos comes in. The AZ Altmar result was superb, but the last three have been on another level because we're under big pressure and playing catch-up in the league. That's an extremely decent point as well, that as the season develops and the story develops, everything gets more pressurised and we put ourselves under a bit of pressure getting falling behind in the league. But now we seem to be going in the right direction. And as you say, Colin, as, as we're looking at a more settled side. We're looking at the more options. But it doesn't matter how many options that we've got coming back in. The man Yota is undroppable, eh? At this yeah. precise moment in time, the man Yota is undroppable. Yeah, and I just want to clarify, because I've seen a couple of people saying in the comments, he's 20-odd, why can we not get 38 games out of him? You probably will get 38 games out of him. What I'm saying in the likes of is, you're maybe only going to get 25, 30 great games out of him. You're not going to get every single game where he's going to be outstanding, because that's just not the way that football is. You don't get someone who plays 38 brilliant games week in and week out. Even Messi and Ronaldo have bad games. Jota's going to have some bad games, and what we need is the option for someone to come in and take them off after 60 minutes and turn to to an Adam Montgomery or a Mikey Johnson and say, look, change the game for us. Um, But at the minute, he is undroppable. Um, And he's so flexible because he looked good on the right yesterday, he looked good on the left, he looked good coming through the middle. And that is going to confuse so many defences this season because they'll have him lined up to play on the left, but the next minute you'll see him on the right-hand side and the guy will go, who's marking him? That that fluidity in the forward three is going to be impressive for us. The fact that he came back yesterday and he picked up the ball in the left back area for Kyogo's goal, then played the one two with Montgomery and the ball. There's there's a there's a clip doing the rounds which is from it's a, a unique angle which is right behind yeah. him when he plays that ball to Kyogo. And it's like a nine nine iron he plays the ball with. It's like a little dink and it goes. When you actually have a look at this clip, you see Kyogo. His eyes are on the ball all the time. And his first touch is utterly brilliant. Magnificent. It it takes the defender that's chasing him. As soon as Kyogo takes that first touch, the, 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 the defender that's chasing him goes, I've got no chance here. Because mm-hmm. he wants him to take that bad touch for him to get back in. That first touch is beautiful, but the ball from Yota as well is utterly game changing. It's a game changing ball. Yeah, absolutely. And as you say, the touch from Kyogo, just to get the ball out of his feet, which means that he can use his next touch to slot the ball past the goalkeeper whilst he's miles out of position, um, mm-hmm. just shows the quality and the class that the two players have. Um, I, I mind, I was kind of watching from behind because that's where I sit, it's just sort of behind where Jota plays that pass. Like, um, And I'm going, you, you've missed the ball, it's far too late, you've, you've not played it in time. And he proves you wrong and he slots it in. And at first I thought Kyogo was offside. That's how good Kyogo's run was, yeah, that I thought he was a mile offside. I didn't get a chance to fully celebrate the goal because I thought we were going to go to VAR and get it ruled out. But that just shows the movement is next level from these guys. The passing is next level from these guys. And I think I said that a couple of weeks ago, Jota's going to score an absolute screamer in a couple of weeks. And he's going, to do it, he's going to do it several times this season because his technique is unbelievable. It's next level. And you saw that in the past yesterday. It split open that defence and Kyogo had the ability to bring it down and put it past the goalkeeper and it was unreal. Robert Hyland comes in, well seen, I do not play golf. <laughs> he comes in and tells me it was more like a five iron. So 
Robert's obviously a golfer. I'm, I'm no any golfer whatsoever. Um, look, first half we were. Look at the goals that we've scored, and I wanted to get I wanted to get on to this because after seeing a uh, Yota's ball, the touch from Kyogo, and the fact that he side foots it from outside the box past the goalkeeper is mm-hmm. ex- extremely it's beautiful as well. Lovely, great finish, great composed finish as as well. You look at the goals that we've scored in the last three games, right? Mm-hmm. Aberdeen. The cross and Kyogo's finish at the back post, the way that we worked it down the right-hand side. Absolutely great goal, great team goal. Motherwell, the first goal, the ball by Rogic, Yota's finish. Again, great goal on the transition. The second goal, David Turnbull, just a brilliant individual goal. You look at the Yota's goal, uh, Kyogo's goal yesterday, the build-up to that is utterly delicious. That's what we want to see as a, as a Celtic fan. And you even get to the second goal yesterday and David Turnbull makes an absolute hash of it when he tries to, when he <laughs> takes a fresh air, takes a fresh air swipe and then gets a lucky rick- the lucky ricochet. But one of what makes that an utterly beautiful goal, Go Callum, Mag- Callum McGregor's dink Yes. Over over the defender. Yes. That was missed at the time, and it wasn't until I was watching the highlights again. I mean, that is a superb bit of play. Every bit as good as Yota's ball to make Aye. that goal. If McGregor hasn't got the ability the ability to have that dink, that goal doesn't happen. And it's the same as Yota's ball as well. I thought Callum McGregor's dink yesterday for the second goal should actually get spoke about more than what it actually has. Absolutely, I was saying that to uh, my brother who I was sitting next to at the time. The the fact that he's got the awareness just to get in there and get ahead of the um, the finish Varos defender who was closing him down and get in and get that ball to Jota, that's what makes the goal. And do you know what? I looked at it yesterday and I think overall we had a pass completion at 91%. And see when you watch some of those passes that were going about, as the, the old phrase goes, some of them were hospital balls. But Callum McGregor's retention to actually get the ball and to make sure that we didn't give it away was so important, the fact that he kept the attacks going. That second goal, I mean, did they give it to Turnbull in the end or they given it as an OG? It's an OG. It's is been it, given as an OG. OG. UEFA gave it as an OG. Ah, uh, I mean, considering they gave Salah that one last night, I'm kind of disappointed for Turnbull. Um, look, it was, for me, it was the closing down because we had the ball and... Uh, Freddie had a, a throw in basically just at the corner flag a minute or two before that and we actually just came in as a pack and we closed them in the way that the teams actually do for us because Celtic at throw ins aren't the best team at trying to kind of play the ball out but we closed them in and we went as a team everybody knew who they had to close down they done their job correctly McGregor steals that ball flicks it to Jota and then they've got the awareness to put the ball across and Turnbull Ah, he's got to try. You think he'd score it the first time, but we'll take the second goal. We'll take it however way it goes, and then we'll maybe get to the chances that we should have scored after that. I just think as Celtic fans, sometimes we, like the, those four goals, the goals that we've scored in the last three games, every one of them's had a moment of beauty, a right team, a yes. individual or team moment of beauty, and I think. That's what Poster Coglu wants. That's what he promised us that yeah. we're going to see good goals. He's never he never promised us that we're going to see the uh, what I called Batman football yesterday, the Kapow football and, and all and all of that. But the wham. Given, the wham football, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, but he's shown us that he's going that we're going to get good team goals and good individual goals and and his team is going to entertain. Whose news comes in and says David Turnbull, it was officially a step over to, to, to mystify the goalkeeper. <laughs> uh, I think it mystified himself as well. Uh, it mystified Georgios Yakamakis behind him because he was going, what's going on there? <laughs> uh, where's, where's the other? Where's the other? Uh, I think it was David Riley says, you had done him out of £70 pound by missing that chance. I saw in that. The, uh, in, the, in the final whistle. So hopefully Yota uh, make, makes that up for him uh, soon. What did you think about Yakamakis when he came on yesterday? He looked a big handful, didn't he? 
Um, and I was I was really impressed with the way that he was able to bring the ball down in his chest. And that one where he was, you saw that he's got the eye for goal because it was the spectacular going for the overhead kick. Um, and then there was another one where he squared it and he probably should have took the shot on himself. He is someone who's going to take a bit of time to bed into the team, but he does look as if he'll be a good option um, and a good alternative depending on the kind of game that you're playing. Poor David Kelly there missing Poor the Poor David Kelly. So, David, you'll need to let us know if it was Jota because Turnbull had won and then I, the penalty as well. Was it Jota? We need to know that. I, he's, he's, he's putting all his anger onto the last person there that missed, <laughs> missed the last chance. Eh? Eh, oh, here we go. Paul here comes in. Eh, I had Kyogo in 2 nothing. so happy days. Happy well, days indeed. We've got to be happy for our fellow Tims that beat the bookies at times. Eh? Absolutely. Hopefully, eh, hopefully David's day will come eh, when that happens. Now, that's if you're into a gamble. Remember, gamble responsibly. We need Correct. to make sure. We need to make sure we get that message over. Friday couldn't handle Yaka Marcus when he came on yesterday, could they? No, no. And do you know, it, you kind of put the comparisons out there with uh, the former Greek forward that we had and the way that he used to turn up in the big games. I remember when he used to play against Rangers, and when he'd bring the ball down in his chest, he would have the the kind of hole of the park to find his pass. And that was almost the way that Yakamatis came into the game yesterday. He was linking up so well, and that you could see he's got the ability and the, the kind of moment that suggested that to me and suggested that he will be a, a handful going forward was. Do you, do you remember when Celtic were coming out from? I think it was the Friday corner, and it was the kind of link up play between Jota and Yakamatis, mm-hmm. and they'd four around them. They were not the favourites to get through that, but the two of them kept the ball, and I think Jota eventually won the free kick. That suggests to me that he's going to be able to link up with the players that he's got there and he's going to be that sort of physical player that teams are going to hate coming up against. Not just because I've said it, but Ryan <laughs> Kelly, Adam West, Batman football, that sounds better than Ange Ball to me anyway. Now, that, <laughs> that, that was a term I banned a, a couple of weeks ago from myself anyway. Yes, Yakamakis seems to be the option that we're going to bring on when we want to go long as well. Because yeah. he can, because he can hold the ball up, and we had a discussion off in, and this is a great time to bring it in. Sometimes our crossing is going to nobody, mm-hmm. and Yaka Marcus looks like that type of player who is going to get on the end of things in the box. Yeah, definitely, and I think you're now seeing that with Ange turning to him instead of a Yeti, that he's sort of worked his way up the pecking order as well. Um, I think. On Saturday, he was the one that came in. And then last night as well, when you've also got that option there. So we're now saying that Yakamatis is your backup striker. And he's obviously doing the stuff in training to get him into that because we've not seen it on the park, apart from the sort of 15 minutes last night. So that's hopefully a good sign that over the next few weeks, we'll see him get his first goal and go on a bit of a run from there. As you say, the crossing, yeah, that's one of the things that I think we need to work on although we're getting fairly decent crosses in there, then you're playing it into a guy like Kyogo who isn't the best in the air. He's better with the ball at his feet, most definitely better with the ball at his feet. There's nobody sort of following in as a second player. If you've got Yakamatis in there, then that's probably a far better option. Um, the best crosses you can put into there is probably when you play it low and hard across the box and Kyogo or Abada or someone else like that can get in front of their man and put it into the back of the net. Very similar to the goals that Abada scored this season, the goals that Jota scored against Aberdeen um, and the one that uh, Kyogo nearly scored last night. De- definitely. Monty, the currency that any Celtic striker gets measured in is goals. And a couple of weeks back, I was willing to give Ayeti time to prove himself. He scored the two goals against Ross County. Never done much within the game, mm-hmm. but since then, he's proved to be an empty jersey. Monty comes in. Yakamakis has got to start scoring goals. He's a Celtic striker. That's what we expect Celtic strikers to do. But then Sean comes in straight out after that. And then this is a really good point. We've all seen Bio, Bangura, etc., etc. come on as a sub trying to make an impact and the big Greek striker looks so much better than that than so many of the Dutch strikers we have brought in over the years. Yeah. I'm I, I'm going to expand on that if you would allow me. That's because he's came for a better league than what mm-hmm. Bayo and Bangura have come and he's scored 26 goals in a league 
at which is a decent standard, which is the area division. Yeah, I agree with you. And I also think that he plays that sort of football that suits Scottish football. Like, see, when you look at the, the kind of video clips before players sign and you see a Bangura or a Bayo or someone of that sort of ilk, they don't seem to play the style of football that Celtic do. When you saw the way that um, Yakamatis was playing for Venlo last season, mm-hmm. those crosses that he was getting on the end of, the balls that was getting slid in behind, that's the way Celtic's been playing this season. So we're actually buying someone that suits the system instead of just buying a project that we hope we can turn them in and get them to play the system we want to play because that's not been working for Celtic. That hasn't been working for Celtic and us as a Celtic support, we've been used to Dembele, we've been used to Edward who have came out, got involved, ran from the halfway line, caused utter havoc when they've got the ball. The way Poster Coglu wants his striker to play is you stay in the middle and get on the end of crosses. You might not be involved in the build-up play, but I want you in the middle. I want you scoring goals. And I think we, we could actually be having this conversation about Yakamakis. He'd never done much, but he scored two goals. Yeah. Uh, like The same with Kyogo. Everybody's saying Kyogo's having quiet quiet games. That's because we're not creating the chance. And for me, it's the way that we're set up. It's because your centre-forward can is probably going to go through spells where he's not involved because we don't give him the ball quick enough and we don't create chances for him. And I think we, as Celtic support, have got to learn to change our perception of what we're expecting our centre-forward to do in this system. Yeah, and when you look at it, Kev, when was the last sort of backup or second striker that you could turn to that was going to get you 15, 20 goals at Celtic? When, when have we had a guy like that? Everybody's always been a number one. Even when you had the likes of Lee Griffiths and um, sorry, Musa Dembele up front, Griffiths maybe got 15, 20 once. It wasn't as if it was consistent, and that's what you're looking for from a Celtic striker. You can't just rely on someone like Kyogo to score sort of 20, 30 goals all season and then have the backups coming from James Forrest or someone like that who's been banging in the goals over the the, the last few seasons. You need a backup striker or a number two striker that you can say, right, if Kyogo's not going to score today, Yakamatis is going to score today. Mm-hmm. That, that's what we've not had at Celtic for a long time. Again, Yakamatis is still to prove that. He hasn't yeah, scored true, any, any goals yet. But even looking at January, you're still looking for another centre-forward to come in in January because it's still too light in that area. Unless... As Alan Morrison says in last Friday's show, Abada can actually looks like he could actually play through the middle as well. You've got James Forrest who has been used through the middle as well. Yeah. When when push comes to shove, we are getting more options coming back in that final third. But Yakamakis for me is the unknown most exciting prospect because I know what James Forrest can do. <laughs> I know yeah. my, also you've got Mikey Johnson as well, who mm-hmm. this this is a big few this is a big few months for Mikey Johnson. He has yeah. to keep himself fit and he has to start making an impact or it could be a case of what if we make his Celtic career. We've been saying that now for a while with Mikey Johnson and I thought he was um, he was effective coming off the bench yesterday. He played a, a nice ball through as well and he was determined to go on the ball and that's the sort of the thing you want to see off Mikey Johnson because his talent isn't it's not up for debate. He's got the talent. We've saw it when he's came through. He's, he's scored important goals for Celtic in his short career that he's had so far. But keep him fit and get him involved more frequently and we can see what we can get out of him. There's always been this sort of, he's the next big thing, he's the next big thing. And whether it be through injury or he's just not been picked, we've not seen it. So now it's time for him. He's not a young boy anymore. He's what... 2021, he's been in and around the Celtic team for a number of seasons now. It's time for him to step up and say, Look, I'm Mikey Johnson, I'm number 19, and I'm going to be playing week in and week out. Again, and that's not us not being, as you say, what I say is there, this is a big couple of mums for Mikey Johnson. He will be telling himself that as well. He'll know yeah. that himself, sitting in that dressing room, having a look about, having a look at the options, the, the forward options that we've actually got and going, I need to start making a mark at this football club or my Celtic career could slip away from me. And mm. that has not been that's not been disrespectful to the player. If the player is the, the player will know that himself, Colin, eh? He's yeah. got to know that he's got to pick up on that, eh? Aye, absolutely. I mean, uh- 
you saw things like that before. Um, with sort sort of certain players that you you see coming in. I mean, Liam and Ewan Henderson are the two for me that you think they had so much talent. You, you've seen it. They did play games where you're going, they're guys that could really be mainstays in this team going forward for the next five, ten years. And then whether it be the fact that they don't get given the chance or they just sort of give up and they, they go elsewhere. You're just sort of losing that, and I'm I'm not having a go at the likes of, um, like Liam or uh, Ewan's still here, but the likes of Liam Henderson, he's went on to have a fantastic career over in Italy, and it just maybe wasn't the right fit for him. But the, the kind of the, the players that's coming through from the youth system, there's there's very few and far between that have got that mentality to say I'm a Celtic first team player. You, you've got to believe that that's gone in Ewan Henderson's mind now, looking at his brother. Mm-hmm. And, and and he's seen himself at Celtic going, this is no working for me here, but my brother has proved he can move away and have a successful career. And maybe he's not fully invested now in his Celtic journey. Uh, yeah. that he's already looking at his next move to be the best move of his career. And that is not a slight on the lad. No, <laughs> it's, the, 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 not it's, at all. A, it's a lad's employment. So, again, if he's a sensible guy, I would hope he's been having those thoughts and talking to his brother and his brother going, get yourself out of Italy. Develop your game. This is going to be a good crack for you. I've heard Stephen O'Rourke's comment up uh, for for a wee while now and he's saying, receive my axe on hoops in the post today, lads. Over the moon with it. There's more. If you want to support the channel, you can support it by buying merchandise available at axon.net. Also, to support that we don't just do Celtic stuff. We just didn't turn up here at half past twelve on on a on a weekday, blether any microphones about about the mighty Celtic. We've got loads of other programs on the channel, and if you want to help the channel, give them a dig out as well. The state of Scottish football at six o'clock every night. Switch off Radio Clyde and listen to listen to these guys. The guys are absolutely fantastic. Our own uh, Amy has got a uh, soccer supernova, and on Sunday night they were uploaded a video where she interviews Motherwell assistant boss Keith La- Keith Lasley, the yep. housewife's favourite, as Tam Cowan calls him. I thought, found that interview utterly fascinating. Just the amount of managers that Keith Lasley's actually played under. <laughs> Motherwell was like it was a kick off list <laughs> of like I can't I actually forgot how many managers Motherwell have had over the last ten years. Uh, it's been a, in a bit of turmoil. Eh? <laughs> it was a fantastic interview. This week she's got a uh, Kilmarnock. Well, the, the guy who was known as Kilmarnock striker Colin Nash, who she's going to interview. I got it right, Colin. I did get it right. <laughs> uh, she's going to interview him this Sunday. Also on the channel, you've got an unplugged session with Coochie Cash, which is fantastic as well. What a lad. He's a real bundle of energy. Get that watched. And I'm not going to promote my own programme, but you've got Screamer Celica with myself, with or for Johnny Proctor, who speaks about Celtic and Dundee United between 1990 and 2000. I enjoyed the chat as well. And get on get on everything else we're doing. We're not just... State of Mind is just not a Celtic channel. We're... We're, we're catering for all your needs, uh, so get on it. Thank you. Definitely. Very much. And get I, on. Oh, sorry, uh, Colin. And I know you'll not say it, Kev, but I, I did watch Scream of Celica and it's a long watch, but it's a long interest in watching. It's good to see we're seeing it from not only the Celtic perspective, but from the other perspective as well. Johnny mm-hmm. is a comes across very well in it, um, and if you haven't checked it out yet, then do. See Screamer Celica, it is on the channel. And if you are watching the state of Scottish football tonight, then I will be on the programme as well. So anybody oh. who's sick of my voice might not tune in. <laughs> Double duty today, for you. Double duty today for you. Uh, the reason the Screamer Celica was so long was because we'd done three games. And that was the only reason. Going forward, it should be a wee bit shorter than, than, <laughs> than, than doing the three games, hopefully. Uh, but John, as you say, John, Johnny was great. And we have and we have got fans of other clubs lined up to come on. So we are going to get a different perspective going forward. Let's look forward, talking about other clubs, let's look forward to St. Johnson. And through UEFA's absolute lunacy, we now have a chance to put on pressure 
on Saturday. Yes. Because we play on Saturday at home against St. Johnson, not at the same time as the two Rangers who are at top of the league. We've got a chance at, to be at five o'clock on Saturday night to be one point behind Rangers, even though we would have played our games more. And that's the first time in a little while that we've got that chance, Colin, eh? Absolutely. And this is the thing that we were talking about last season. We never, ever put pressure on from the point of being behind. And now we've got that chance this year, um, especially starting on Saturday. Now, St Johnston are going to be a tricky opponent because they were scudded at the weekend um, off a, a Livingston side who we've unfortunately been beaten by already this season. And, and we saw Effie Ambrose doing Effie Ambrose things. Oh, if anybody's not seen that, go and watch the SPFL highlights for that game. Effie Ambrose is next level, and it was his birthday the other day, so happy 33rd birthday to Effie Ambrose. He's only 33. I thought he was wow. a lot older than that. So did um, But uh, aye, the, the hilarity and the defending that summed up um, Effie Ambrose's career. Now, they, as I said, they get beat 3-0 at the weekend. They're going to have their tails up to come here and have a, a go at us because that's the way Callum Davidson's set up his St Johnston team this season. Um, you've saw the kind of trouble that they've caused uh, other teams in the league. But if Celtic go out there and play the way that Celtic can play, then you're hoping that it should be a comfortable afternoon um, and we can see what it's like to maybe play a Yakamatis through the middle after maybe 60 minutes, given the likes of Kilgo, the, the 30 minute rest so that we've got him fresh and fit for the game against Hibs next Wednesday which will be a massive game for us so let's get the, the guys in, let's get a couple of goals, let's freshen the team up and the big question for me is who starts at left back on Saturday? I will go for Adam Montgomery I will go for Montgomery and the reason being he started yesterday. Again, it depends on his fitness. It really does depend on his mm. fitness. But if Adam Montgomery is fit to give 60, 70 minutes once again, I reckon he will start. My worry about Saturday is after the mess St. Johnson made of their home game there, they're going to be well, well up for this game. Absolutely. And, and, Absolutely. They're, not, and they're not going to be they're not going to give up mistakes as easily as what they did against Livingston. So we've we've got to be very like inventive, very on the ball, very verve like. We 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 we've got to actually put them under pressure from the start because they're not going to give up goals easily after what happened at the weekend. No, and I also think that they will come out and have a go at us as well. They've got mm-hmm. certain players that can do that, like so. Um, Glenn Middleton and um, even the likes of uh, what do you call the boy that used to play for for Rangers uh, uh, Halloran uh, you'll have uh, him. He's, he's definitely the, them two coming down the, the, the wings you get Stevie May who okay he's not the Stevie May of old but he still knows where the back of the net is and the Aberdeen fans know that as well um, this is it will be a tricky one but we should have the professionalism and the ability to put a couple of goals past them and see the, the game out quite comfortably. Definitely. I, I really do hope that we get an early goal. Yeah. If we get an early goal and, and open up the game, then it will be exciting for the fans who are able to go to the game, game on Saturday and follow up everybody else that's going to be watching. But I think we do need that early goal because the longer it will go on, the longer it goes on nothing each, the crowd might get a bit restless, even though I think we saw yesterday the trust in the process of Postacoglu's team and the options that we do have to come off the bench now to make that difference in the final third as well. I think we need to trust the process the longer it is at nothing each. I think we'll create chances. If we turn up on the day, we should win. But no way am I saying it's a gimme. No way. No. It's not a gimme. We're not at that no. stage yet. We're not at that stage of the, the evolution of Posta Coglu to actually say it's a gimme. I think that will do us today, Colin. This has been great. It's been extremely positive after a great European win uh, for, for Celtic. Thanks for watching. As I say, check out the other stuff on, on the channel and be kind to each other. See you all later. 